We're almost done with this now. We've calculated the terminal so value. What we need to do now is we need to go to cell L22 and check and see, okay, based on a seven point a seven and nine times EBITDA multiple, what is the implied perpetual growth rate of this company in again in 2007? How much do we think that this is equivalent to what is the growth rate after 07 from 07 on to infinity? So this is going to require a little bit of algebra. So I know you haven't done algebra since junior high school, but you got to bear with me in this last one here. This is important because you need to do this common sense sanity check. So how do we calculate how much the, what the implied perpetual growth rate is? What are your inputs here? This was easy down here. We had our terminal value in 07. We knew our EBITDA. We divided. We got that quotient. We got those two numbers. But now we need to know what our growth rate is. We got our terminal value. We don't know what our growth rate is. How do we do that? We'll take a quick look at this. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. This is our basic formula again, right? Terminal value equals cash flow times 1 plus G divided by R minus G. We're going to solve and isolate G, the G term. And that's how we're going to solve for this perpetual growth rate number. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to cross multiply. We're going to cross multiply these terms. So now we end up with TV times R minus G equals cash flow times 1 plus G. And then what are we going to do next? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the distributive property of multiplication and distribute these terms out. So we'll distribute TV to the R and the G and ditto for cash flow on the right hand side. So, how does this formula look now? This is what it looks like. It'll look like TVG, TVR minus TVG equals cash flow plus cash flow times G. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to isolate the G terms. So, we're going to move this TVG to the right. We're going to move this cash flow number to the left. And then, this is what our formula is going to look like now. It's going to say TVR minus cash flow equals cash flow G plus TVG. Now, we're going to undistribute the G terms. We're going to basically isolate the two G's on the right-hand side. So our formula is now going to say equals G times cash flow plus terminal value. And then, what are we going to do? We're going to isolate G term completely now. So we're going to say G equals TVR minus cash flow. Where did that come from? That came from this here. Divided by cash flow plus TV. And that came from here. So this is our star, superstar equation now. This is our superstar equation. We are basically going to input this formula into our G and we'll calculate now what the implied perpetual growth rate is based on what? Based on a seven times EBITDA multiple. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember this now. TVR minus cash flow divided by cash flow plus TV. So let's go ahead and input that into our formulas now. So we're in cell L22. Let's go ahead and input that into our formulas. So L22 equals... What was the first term? We're going to say equals the terminal value times R times your WAC. But let's put some parentheses first. So say equals, open parentheses, the terminal value, which will be I-22. So hit left arrow a couple times to I-22. And again, we're trying to figure out what is the implied perpetual growth rate based on a seven times EBITDA multiple. So equals I-22 multiplied by our WAC, which is going to be D-17. So let's, I'm just going to enter it in D-17. F4 function key so that we can anchor it. So it'll say now terminal value, open parentheses, terminal value times your 10% WAC minus your cash flow. So put a minus. And what cash flow number? We were using tax affected EBIT, don't forget. So let's go to cell M11 for 184, 704. That's our cash flow number we are using consistently. So that's our tax affected EBIT. So do me a favor, hit the F4 function key at that point. So you're going to anchor that. And you can say divide, close parentheses and divide. Now, what was our denominator again? So far, this is what we've done. We've done the numerator. The numerator says terminal value times WAC minus cash flow. We just did that. 
Let's take a look at the denominator now. Let's take a look at plus cash flow plus their terminal value. So let's go ahead and do that. Divided by open parentheses, cash flow first or terminal value. doesn't really matter. Let's just say terminal value, I-22 plus go back to M11 and F4 anchor that for me and close parentheses. And as soon as you hit enter, just make, take a quick look now. Make sure that your formula matches mine. Hit enter. You should have an implied perpetual growth rate of 1.8%. Let me build this up for you so you can take a look at the formula in case you need it. Again, it's going to take I-22. I-22 is our terminal value times D-17 anchored, which is our WAC, minus M-11, our cash flow. That's our 2007 tax-affected EBIT number. That whole thing divided by the denominator, which is our terminal value, I-22, plus M-11, which is our, again, our cash flow, our tax effective EBIT number in 2007. Hit enter. That will give you implied perpetual growth rate of 1.8%. And again, here's what that 1.8% means. This means that at a seven times EBITDA multiple to calculate our terminal value, this is implying that your free cash flows will grow at 1.8% forever at the end of one, 2007 through to forever infinity, it will grow at 1.8%. So in cell L23 now, go down one, hit control D as in David, you got a 3.5%. Just quickly do a F2 function key. Just take a look at that. Now I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here so I can look at the bigger picture. I can look at the entire screen. What this basically says is, at 3.5%, this implies, this is the implied perpetual growth rate based on a nine times EBITDA multiple. In other words, if I assume that the value of my firm is nine times 2007 EBITDA, this means that it just implies that my free cash flows will grow at a 3.5% growth rate forever. Now, what's the point of this? What's the key, key point? You gotta check this in a couple ways. You gotta check, first of all, on a sanity check. If 